You know, there are a couple things that probably should stay bit in the ground. One of them is John McCain. The other is this bill that apparently they're trying to secretly pass called the Earn It Act. Which, uh, shout out to a buddy of mine on Twitter. I can't remember his name off the top of my head right now. But um, he linked me to this art. He added me on Twitter about this. And I thought I would just read the article and respond to it. Because I haven't done that in a while. But if there's one thing... But from what I've read of this so far, I do not like this Earn It Act. Especially when I see who's backing it. Like, it sounds like it was formed by a bunch of busybodies who don't know how to mind their own fucking business. And have nothing better to do. But yeah, here's the article. Adult businesses, sex workers, again put at risk by Earn It Act. By Gustav Turner, February 1st, 2022. Washington, adult industry sex workers and digital rights advocates unanimously sound the alarm today about the nefarious implications of state censorship and privacy issues for the Revive Earn It Act, which was reintroduced yesterday by Senator Richard... Blumenthal, a Democrat, obviously. Actually, I'm surprised. I thought for sure a Republican would be responsible for this. Must be a conservative Democrat, because, you know, not all conservatives are Republican. The bill, which purports to have as its, its goal to protect victims and survivors of child sexual, sexual exploitation, which this reads to me, again, uh, is one of the most tired old fucking arguments that I'm sick of to death of hearing people use an excuse. Think of the children's. Fuck the children. I'm not going to lie. I really do not care at this point. Because they use children as a as a shield. An excuse to do stupid shit that they want to do to encroach on people's freedom. So yeah, fuck the children if that's what they're going to keep on doing. Yeah, fuck them. I don't care. Like, the more the, more the generations go, the dumber they get. Don't believe me? Look at... David Hogg. And which announced by Blumenthal with a media blitz about child protection is in fact a broad overhaul of Section 230 protections known by online rights advocates as the First Amendment of the Internet to strip platforms of immunity for third-party uploaded content. Oh, by the way, this article is by IBIZ, XBIZ, I forgot to mention that, and as they have reported, Earn It will also open the way for politicians to de- to define the legal categories of pornography and pornographic websites as they or the lobbies that fund them, please, which is a cherished goal of organizations that seek to reintroduce obscenity productions for the content now protected by free speech, jurispu- jurisprudence, I don't know. Earn It has been championed by top religiously motivated and anti-porn crusading groups such as NCOSC. And if that name doesn't sound familiar, you might recognize this other name that they used to be known by, Morality in Media, which reportedly received advance notice of its reintroduction yesterday. And if you don't know what Morality and Media is, uh, I didn't either. I kind of forgot about it until... Well, yeah, if it is who I think it is. Morality and Media, the National Center on Sexual Exploitation, formerly organized as Morality and Media before changing its structure, is an American nonprofit with the goal of exposing the links between all forms of sexual exploitation. And these sound like the same dipshits who went after the Lucifer show back when it was a show and as a comic. And... Yeah, it's part of the religious riot, so I'm not too surprised. And I'm assuming they had to change their name because everyone was hip to the fact they were full of horse shit. Founded in 1962. Anyway, anyway. Point is, they have about as much trust credibility as Joe Biden. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the members of this group are like Joe Biden and love to sniff children's hair. Quote, if you want to know just how bad the bill is, in quote, tech news site Tech Dirt's legal reporter Mike Metzke wrote today, I found out about the reintroduction of the bill before it was announced anywhere via a press release sent to me by NCOSC, which he described as the busybody organization of prudes who believe that all pornography should be banned. Yeah, and for the record, I don't care that much for pornography. 
Um, not that I'm against it, I just don't care about it now. But, uh, yeah, what, what, pe what adults buy or produce with other consenting adults, that's none of your fucking business. Butt the fuck out. NCOSC, Masnick added, was also dr a driving force behind FOSTA, the dangerous law, which has many similarities to earn it, that as we predicted, did nothing to stop sex trafficking and plenty of things to increase the problem of sex trafficking while putting women in danger and making it more difficult for the police to actually stop trafficking. Oh, what a surprise. Busybody bullshit uh, harms people more than it does good. Why am I not surprised? Aren't it returns from its early grave like most of us suspected John McCain would or Joe Biden like he will when when Lucifer needs a new pup when Lucifer runs out of puppets. The bill was initially introduced in twenty twenty by Blumenthal in partnership with his South Carolina Republican colleague Lindsey Graham. Oh for God's sake, Lindsey Graham, I had respect for you. Why did you have to do well I had a a shot of respect for you, now you do this. Fuck. At the time, Graham made explicit his relentless aim to censor adult content online, writing to a consultant in an email that XBIZ reviewed. I have concerns about our children's ability to access pornography material through the internet and email. While I will hardly support the First Amendment, I highly doubt that. I do not believe exposing young people to pornography is an acceptable exercise of freedom of speech. And for those of you who think I might be overreacting to this, they don't stop just once. Like... I believe Count Dankula said it best. They encroach more and more on your freedoms. They wait till you, the public gets too pissed and they stop. Then a few years down the line, they resume encroaching on more freedoms. Till one day, next thing you know, you have jackboots kicking in your door because you, I don't know, sneezed the wrong way. Or, fail, or failed to say excuse me after you sneezed a second away from where it was acceptable. He added in December 2020, he will continue to work with his colleagues in Congress to limit society's exposure to inappropriate material. When the bipartisan efforts was first unveiled during the last presidential campaign, both senators loudly ballyhooed it as a forceful anti-big tech measure. However, critics pointed out that besides its already controversial intended mission to erode or even repeal Section 230 protections, the bill would also crucially undermine privacy by targeting encryption. As Tech Dirt's Mike Masnick pointed out, corporate and intel intelligence complaints against the encryption busting potential of Earnit were so concerning that Blumenthal and Graham were eventually persuaded to adopt an amendment from Senator Patrick Leahy to more explicitly attempt to exempt encryption from the bill, but it was done in a pretty weak manner. End of quote. Then in late 2020, Graham and the lame duck President Trump attempted to force Congress to pass Earn It by... B oh, God, Trump, why? Um, wait, why are you calling him a lame duck? Yeah, fuck it. By bundling it with an unrelenting bill, but that effort was thwarted at the last minute, and the bill died for that congressional period. Yesterday, though, Blumenthal loudly announced that Earn It is back on the table. <sighs> yep. The bill is virtually unchanged from its previous incarnation, which was opposed by most digital rights and privacy groups, but also by adult industry organizations and sex worker advocates. Yeah, much like Hillary Clinton, this is a law that will not go away, apparently. The reemergence of the bill generated enough concern to prompt Mike Stabile, probably mispronouncing that, Free Speech Coalition Director of Public Affairs to tweet an urgent call to arms against what he calls SESTA FOSTA 2.0, warning that it's back and the danger it poses to sex workers is more extreme than ever. Hmm. Well, he makes this thing sound like the Patriot Act. I know, my kid. Stab Bill urged members of an adult industry and sex workers to get up to speed quick, and they mean out of bed. And now with your partner on the implications of Earn It for their livelihoods. It's got bipartisan support, a moral panic at the back, and the potential to devastate the hard-fought gains of the sex work creator economy. Wow, I didn't know they even had an economy. Anyway. 
Kate D'Amato, a noted advocate for the rights of sex workers with nonprofit Reframe Health and, Injusti- and Justice, likewise expressed urgency by pointing out that Earn It is already scheduled to get marked up, which is the first step to post introduction. Most bills never go to make up, so that means they are putting pressure to move this through. XBIZ spoke today with Stabil, who added that the bill was led to the type of wide-scale deplatform of sex work and sexual speech that we saw after Sesta Fosta. Were it to pass, he emphasized, we'd like to see most of, most, if not all, adult content and the accounts removed from the mainstream platforms for fear of liability that could come with ever accidentally hosting CSAM, as well as the erasure of end-to-end encryption on messaging platforms. Blumenthal revived Earn It Act, Stable Act noted, uses a moral panic to enact more surveillance, more discrimination, and more censorship of sex workers, which, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. They're fine with that. It's for the greater good, I'm assuming. The But the children, excuse, oh, they're getting to the point I was making earlier. Industry attorney and First Amendment expert Lawrence Walters from the Walters Law Group con- concurred that this ill-conceived legislation threatens to discriminate online freedom and eliminate the ability to communicate privately without government surveillance. Like other internet censorship legislations, Walter continued, the Reboot Earn It Act is being sold as a child protections bill. And don't, yeah, I normally don't have a problem with reboots, but this one I will make an exception. In order to pressure lawmakers to vote for it without critical evaluation, in reality, the bill will intensify the harm caused by the sesta fosta disposition. Like, I swear, this sesta fosta, it sounds like it's, it's from a Germany. And whenever I read it aloud, disappointingly impact LG alphabet community individuals and target sexual education material. Well, it depends on where the sexual education is being done because if it's at school, I'm all for getting rid of it. Like, unless you're teaching high schoolers about this stuff or, like, when it's appropriate, then, yeah, fuck that. Walter said that he nevertheless remains hopeful that Congress will again reject the Earn It Act as a danger to expressive freedom and an infringement on the rights to privacy. And it just said, and if you want to read this for yourself, I will be posting a link to it in the description. Now, I know nothing about laws. I'm not a lawyer. A lot of the stuff is flying over my head, but it is concerning. Because anything that infringes, and you're probably asking yourself why you should even care. You don't even watch porn or something. Okay, you maybe you shouldn't care, but here's why you should care somewhat. As I said, they don't stop at just... Uh, also, I said they were going to get to the children excuse. Um, no, they didn't. I thought I assumed they were. That was just a tile for the next section. But anyway, why you should care is this. They do not stop. As I said, they do not stop encroaching on freedoms. They just wait till people have calmed down long enough to resume encroaching on the freedoms. They will use any excuse to get more power. They have no problem lying to you about what their real motivation is. And I do not trust either Republicans or Democrats in this matter. They are both liars. Both sides of the aisle have attacked hobbies I enjoy. They have lied about it, slandered it, and have given me no reason to trust them. Like, the only one I trust is Trump, and that's just barely now. Now that I know he was involved with this shit. But yeah, no. This bill, if you want to be involved in this, I guess contact your congressman or whatever. Because this is alarming. And I imagine this will do more harm than good. A bit like the Tipper Gore shit. I imagine the stuff she wanted was like, what did they say? It's a remedy for dandruff by decapitating someone or something like that. That's how ineffective I imagine this law and the previous one that was also referenced in this article were. In fact, the previous... The previous amendment that they made, it sounds like it did more harm than good for the public and for children. Now, don't get me wrong. I am all for stopping the exploitation of children and women and men, but anyway. But I do not – the government should – you cannot legislate a problem away. You have to deal with it on a societal level, not in the government. And the political class should be allowed nowhere near this issue. They need to be told to fuck off. 
or to eat shit and die. I really don't care how you phrase it. But yeah, this unwanted reboot of a bill needs to die, and like McCain, stay six feet under where it belongs. But yeah, those are my thoughts. That's the article. Have a nice day. And um, remember the game was rigged from the start, and don't trust Big Brother.